Oh. Hi, everyone. We are live. We hear and we can begin. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Hi. Hello. So, I th but we're not on the on full screen yet. Um, but I guess it's fine. Okay. So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our presentation. Um, I'm Valerie, uh, the Communi Community Communications Manager for Wikibase, and I'm going to present with Christos, who's the Partner Manager for Wikibase. So we're going to talk about the wondrous world of Wikibase. Um, what we envision is a hopefully easy to grasp introduction to what Wikibase is all about. And yeah, we're happy to be here with you. And we hope you enjoy it. So today we'll talk about the vision. Uh, we'll talk a little bit on what linking data is actually about. Um, we'll give you an intro into what Wikibase can do and where we envision it in the ecosystem and linked open data web. Uh, we'll also show you some showcases, um, talk about community and support, and that's it for today. So we envision diverse communities around the world who participate in Wikidata and in a network of specialized Wikibases to co-create an open and free global knowledge graph in a thriving linked open data web. You can see a visualization of that on the left. And now I continue. And here you can see basically what we mean by, by linking data. So the way that knowledge bases are organized within Wikibase instances is uh, is in the same way that it is on Wikidata, with which you might be familiar with, or some of you may be familiar with, where you have items, you have properties, and you have statements for its properties. You have unique items, like my young Gelu here, for instance, and then you have various properties for each one of the items. For example, the place of birth which in this case for my again would be St. Louis. But the thing is that unlike a traditional database, here St. Louis is an item in itself with its own properties. And in this way, as an item with properties and various statements, and some of these statements would be again items in themselves, you are able to create, we are able to create a much more rhizomatic knowledge base, not like the traditional database where you would have, you know, a very um, top-down organization of data, but rather a knowledge base, what we call a knowledge base. And thus, Wikibase is the free, so is free software, of course, that stores and organizes information which can be collaboratively edited and read by both humans and computers. It can be translated into multiple languages and it can be shared with the rest of the world as part of the linked open data web. Now, the key functionalities of Wikibase is that users can create and manage their own linked open knowledge bases. They can use a flexible, there is a flexible data model. So users can build their own data model, which suit their needs. And they are not confined by, you know, by the, by the data model that is provided by the software. In this case, you can make your own that will suit exactly your needs. Uh, everything is on MediaWiki interface, which means that we can easily access and update the data 
all users collaboratively, everyone who's working on this specific wiki base, on each specific wiki base instance. And just like on Wikidata, we can interact, we can ask questions using Sparkle, the powerful query language. And we would say that Wikibase is suitable for, for data collections uh, that, that demand that uh, want a flexible data model. It is very powerful for linking databases to external sources. And this means to external sources in general, or it could mean to Wikidata or to other wiki bases, to other wiki base instances. And then it's uh, pretty suitable for collaborative projects as well, where many people can edit and manipulate the data. It is uh, it is really good for you know data that should be readable by humans and by machines. So they can also, as I said before, data that can be questioned through Sparkle in this sense. And then for projects that involve uh, multilingual labor. So one thing that makes Wikibase also very unique is that Wikibase doesn't see itself as a standalone project, but as a part of a greater ecosystem. So its collaborative nature makes it uh, easier than ever to uh, to create, connect, and grow a collaborative linked knowledge base. Um, it's enabling the co-creation of the world's knowledge, largest knowledge graph of free and open data, uh, which will be used to create new and accessible knowledge for the world. When you look onto the next slide, uh, then you see that it can be a it can be a scenario in which a lot of different uh, knowledge bases and projects are interlinked with each other and can nurture, exchange, and uh, create new knowledge together. And this is where we see Wikibase heading towards too. Hi. You got a sense in the previous slide of uh, the users of the organizations, but we went through it pretty quickly. So we're going to go a little bit into more detail about who is using Wikibase. It's, uh, in fact, it's pretty difficult to say that. It's pretty difficult to track down everyone who's using it. And especially when we're talking about Wikibase suite, the self hosted version of Wikibase. Uh, however, like the image we have approximately, looks a little bit like this chart here. In which, yes, we know that you know, science researchers, government as well, uh, government related agencies and organizations are using Wikibase, but essentially the largest, uh, let's say part of the users of Wikibase comes from the glance from galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And here we have like a few examples of uh, users. This is, for example, the European Union, the European Commission, is using it for the EU knowledge graph and as a data repository for the cohesion website. Essentially, what they have done is a, a database or a knowledge base rather in which there are data for all funding that the European Union has given, has provided to various projects over the years. And uh, we see this actually as a very significant uh, project and initiative for openness, for open knowledge, but also, you know, for a, for a healthy democratic society, there is transparency about the funding, and there is there is um, it, it, it's not only open. Such data are supposed to be open anyway, but by, by organizing them in this way and by making them uh, searchable and queryable, 
it's also accessible. It's making it accessible. So citizens of the European Union or anywhere in the world can actually see where money from the European Union is going, has been going over the years. And yeah. Right, that's one example then of Wikibase. And here's another. This one is the fact grid. It is a Wikibase instance that started <laughs> as a research project of a research group of historians, but <laughs> It started with a very specific purpose, basically to document the history of the Illuminati. Uh, but by using it and by, you know, by, by exploring its functionality, so to say, they have decided, the makers, the original makers of this, they have decided that it can be much more. And what it has become today is, let's say, an open database for historians, for researchers, historians, to not only deposit their data, but rather to work live, collaboratively, analyze and compare and connect data. Rhizom is one of the first organizations that picked up uh, Wikibase. Rhizom is an art organization that, that works with born digital art. And they have adapted, they have adopted Wikibase in order to create the, the art base, their art base, so to say, of, you know, of born digital artworks. And they commented, like in, in our discussions, they commented about how the flexible model of Wikibase captures the constantly changing nature of digital art. And this is exactly why, this is exactly how it treats them, so to say. The modern digital art has the particularity that each artwork will be, might be completely different, a completely different format, a completely different uh, thing from the rest. So if we are talking about something that is not standardized and not canonical, and you want to create a database of such uh, items and just of such data, then Wikibase, at least for them, has worked pretty well in doing that. Right, I think we don't have super much time, so I guess it's... Uh, I think you can still talk about quickly about uh, Enslaved and Kichua Base. Enslaved is, a, is an amazing project, and again, like a very very significant initiative. It's a Wikibase instance in which, uh, in which they have created an linked open data base of the history of the transatlantic slave trade. What I was describing before about a knowledge base in which uh, properties and statements and items can be mixed and organized in a rhizomatic way, he finds an excellent application in this case, because in this case, we have, for example, items as people, events, places, and so on. And by connecting the data within the database, not in the, not in the traditional structure top-down way, but in the way of a knowledge base, like a wiki base, you can explore users, historians, researchers, or anyone, basically, can explore, for example, people's biographies or family trees or, you know, movements of people in the States, for example. And again, we at least think that this is a very important initiative, as actually the Kids for Base as well. Another example, a smaller wiki base instance in comparison to what we've seen so far. It's an attempt to document and to create a comprehensive database of the Quetzal language. And this one is built on Wikibase Cloud, right? Um, Valerie. Yes. So if you want to use Wikibase and have a look at it, uh, we'd be happy to welcome you and especially welcome you in our community. Um, it continues to grow and um, we really like uh, to 
have other community members engage with each other um, and we build or let them build by others together a number of avenues to connect with each other. So there's the user group, mailing lists, the Telegram channel, monthly live sessions, or the Wikibase stakeholder group. And you can find all of them um, on our sites as well. And then uh, we also offer uh, support um, to help you onboarding into the software with um, detailed documentation on uh, how to, this is the next slide, um, on how to set up Wikibase using the Docker images or do it manually. Uh, we have a useful FAQ and technical support through third party um, support service providers that you can also find. So that's it from our side. Um, thank you for joining us here. Uh, we hope that you have a better idea now of what Wikibase is. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to um, partnerships or our contact address, um, and you will find much more information on the Wikibase website uh, and on MediaWiki. Um, so thank you for joining us here um, and have a great rest of your conference day.